Uh, I was about to say, please welcome the Houston team, uh, the whole from Houston, but uh, today this uh, Houston team, I can see that's a Houston team, uh, is representing UPS, please welcome the UPS team. <laughs> Houston Nationals made it to the World Series, which is the championship game. And uh, actually, the game one of that series is today. And to show my love and passion for senior design, instead of going to Houston to tell you with my friends and family, I'm here in front of you guys talking and presenting my project. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make sure I'm my third player, making a double play to end the inning to see if it's going to be. Um, and during the commercial break, I got to thinking, how much brands use acronyms? I mean, just look at baseball, there's the MLB, football, there's the NFL, and then there's other companies, right? Like ESPN, NBC, BMW, and so on. And each acronym represents the company's title. It's almost as if the company relies on the acronym to create an identity for not only themselves, but for us, the customer as well. But what about UPS? UPS stands for the United Parcel Service, and it was founded in 1907. They have been a successful company for over 115 years. Let that sink in. Hi, my name is Marco Raquel and I'm an industrial engineering major. I'm Phelan Cohen and I'm also an industrial engineering major. And I'm Emily Diaz and I'm an engineering management major. And we are increasing efficiency of UPS through our strategy to reduce the stigma to be developing every small business. UPS is a supply chain management, uh, shipping and receiving company and our sponsor is Elijah Williams, who is an industrial engineer on the Houston Islands. So our team is working within the preload operations department at UPS, and we're specifically focusing on the truck loading process. So this process occurs at every facility, it's at every customer center, and it's the process that ultimately gets the packages in the truck into the customers. So the team come into this department every morning, and the one goal they have in mind is to identify the waste sources and get rid of them to the best of their ability. Our team's objective specifically is to reduce the sort span within this process. So the sort span is basically this big chunk of time from the moment that the packages land on the conveyor belt. They run down the conveyor belt where there are trucks parked on either side and staff members ready to load them in. And it ends the moment that the package gets in the correct truck. <clears throat> Some of our decision variables for our project will be the volume package flow rate, uh, just because the inbound volume is different on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as the truck size and the build runtime. Knowing how fast or slow the conveyor belt goes will be critical for our project. And some of our expected outputs will be the truck lineup as well as the staff size. These two components are the most important for our project. With our decision variables, we expect to have team inputs that will then produce outputs that will be data driven. So this is not for you to read, but this is just an example of one of the data tables that UPS has provided us for this project. So here we have the average time a package spends in the source span based on things like how many people are handling the package, how fast the belt is moving, and what the package flow rate is. This is also not for you to read, which is an example, again, of some data that we were given. Here is the average time it takes a truck, one to nine trucks, of a certain size to be loaded. So this one was given to us kind of in conjunction with some requirements for the project. The first one is that we need to develop algorithms that are UPS really specific. So there are a lot of industry standards for kind of this uh, supply chain management type, type of company. So one of them is like, uh, you know, a staff member can only handle up to three trucks at a time. A truck takes on average this amount of time to load. So these kind of standards are useless unless you implement your company specific kind of information into them. So our job is to take the UPS data that they provided us and create an algorithm with them. Another requirement for us is to use Excel Visual Basic for application. This is just the language of choice for our sponsor. Um, it's really accessible to all the staff members at departments at different facilities, so this is what we're using. And they're specifically looking for us to develop macros, um, which are basically just shortcuts that reduce manual labor to kind of help that interaction with between staff members and the tool we're creating. Another requirement is just kind of our, how we measure our effectivity. So we're use, using Lean Six Sigma methods just to kind of focus on waste reduction and variability reduction. And the process we're using is DMAKE. So we've taken the time now to define our problem for you all, but what the stuff we're really kind of focusing on at this point is measuring. Currently, UPS's process is based purely on estimations. 
So they come in in the morning and spend about 15 minutes eyeballing the amount of packages they have, um, use those industry standards, and just kind of make decisions on their outfits for the truck lineup and how many people are on staff. These 15, 15 minutes end up requiring kind of an endless amount of corrections. So, you know, they pick 10 trucks and they end up needing 15. They've over or underutilized their staff members. All of these things require them to come to a complete halt, um, make these corrections, and then start again. So it ends up taking way longer than 15 minutes. So the requirement for us is to maintain that timeliness or decrease the amount of time it takes them to do that, but ultimately increase the accuracy of the results the first time around so they're not having to stop this process. And now for our constraints, to, so the first one would be proper limitations. As they mentioned, uh, UPS's tool of choice is uh, using Excel. Um, in the past, the company has been previously tempted to use similar tools, but the tools they used took an optimization approach, which led to data overload. Uh, so that's why we want to use the Lean Six Sigma because it focuses more on accuracy and waste reduction um, and rather than uh, doing that with an uh, optimal approach. And then they also have extended runtime, so the team and I are just trying to figure out how to reduce the runtime as well. And then the second one would be available data. So we have the bit of data that UPS gives us, so we're just kind of trying to work with what we have. And then the third one would be time. Time should always a constraint uh, that we think is professionally, academically, or personally. As for our project timeline, here is our deck chart. So for you to read, just um, kind of an overview of the year uh, on a month-by-month -month basis of what we have done and what we are planning to do in the future. Another aspect of our timeline kind of planning, we're using agile method called Scrum or Scrum Band. Um, so an aspect of the Scrum, we're using a backlog to kind of uh, look forward on our project, determine the tasks that need to be accomplished, but maybe aren't pertinent to the things that we're doing right now. So it's just a way for us to kind of keep them on the back burner and just keep them in mind throughout the entire project. We're also utilizing a kind of a weekly sprint. So a sprint is just this period of time that you designate to accomplish a goal. Our team is on a weekly basis. And we're using a Kanban board to kind of keep everything organized during this week. So it's a series of lists to do in progress and done. Everything starts in the to-do list at the beginning of the week. And as a team, we kind of divide these tasks and it's our individual duty to get them to the done list by the end of the week. And this really helps with team transparency and passive documentation, which is our main form of documentation for the project. And for our division of labor, we understand that we each bring maybe strengths to the team that can be utilized. For example, Emily would be our data analyst, as in the past she has used Excel and data analytics. I myself would be the UPS mediator, as I've had several UPS mentorships in the past. So any additional resources or data that the team needs, I'll be able to help. Last but not least, Bailey will be our Agile methodologist as she has taken Agile development courses and she will help us more with organization and just making sure we stay on task with our deadlines. However, with that being said, we're all concerned with the VBA and output delivery, so we expect to contribute equally more or less to the uh, Excel VBA. And how we plan to do this is through our weekly meetings, whether it's with Dr. Moras, our sponsor, or just within ourselves. In these meetings, we discuss feature weekly or monthly deadlines and um, we also take this time to do any labor that we need to do for our PBA code. As for conflict management, there is a conflict between our team, we'll try to resolve it on our own. If not, we will go to Dr. Morris or Dr. Thank you. This concludes our presentation. I would like to take this moment to thank uh, our advisors, Dr. Morris and Dr. E, as well as our sponsor, Elijah Williams, and the industrial engineering manager, Andre Bailatoe, which is coming over here. He's actually a St. Mary's alumni, so that's pretty cool. Uh, thank you. We'll not be delighted to answer any questions that you guys may have. Thank you.